Hi guys, uh, here's a tutorial on uh, making diptychs or triptychs or polyptychs. <laughs> diptychs are two images next to each other. Triptych is three images. Polyptych is many. So once you start doing four and five images, uh, it's called a polyptych, right? Okay, um, so I've got these three images of the street. I showed you these in class, probably, depending on what class we're talking about here, but here they are, these three images shot in Dumbo. Cool shots. They've already been edited. You can probably tell that. They have some vignetting going on. I've added this black border around them. All right, so I've done all that work to each image individually, and now I've got them here. I didn't have to do them individually. I could, like, open them up and work on them in Photoshop and making a diptych at the same time, but these happen to be already edited. Okay, so if I start off and I know that I want these images, say these two left images, to be in the diptych, I can select one and select the other, and I can go up to Tools, come down to Photoshop, and I can go to Load Files into Photoshop Layers, and that'll open up these two images into one file, and the two images will be on separate layers, right? It's a very quick way of, uh, you know, making a, starting off with all the images in one one file. It's a way that's good <laughs> if you know that's where you're going, right? But let's say you didn't know that. You're like, oh, I'm going to start working with this image. I think it's a cool image. I like it. You start working on it. You double click on it. You open it up in Photoshop, and then you decide, oh, well, what would this look like if I brought these two together, right? So. Um, I'll do that version. Right? I'm going to open up this one file. And in fact, I've already opened it up in Photoshop. It's sitting back here. right? So here's that image. Um, it's uh, all alone, all by itself. I do happen to have three tabs at the top here. So I have the other image opened already. I just clicked on that tab, the right tab. All right, so I have this one and I've got that one. Over on the left, I've got another tab where I actually did open the two images together. And if you look over on the right in the layer panel, you'll see I've got two layers and it's those two images right together. Right. Okay, so here's this one image is all by itself, right? No other layer there. Whenever you open up an image alone, you'll see that that layer there in the layer panel is actually what's called the background. So it's kind of like it is the canvas, right? The image is not distinguished from the canvas. If I unlock it, now it's a regular layer. And now I can expand the canvas and be able to move this image around, right? So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the canvas bigger. And if, you're, if you don't know what the canvas is, you're, you'll see it in a few seconds here. So I'm going to expand the canvas, and I'm going to do that by going up to Image up in the top menu. Right, here's image, click on that, here's the drop down, and you see image size. You can be changing the image size, but we actually want to change the canvas size. So I'm going to go to canvas size, right? We get to this dialog window that allows me to set the width and the height of the canvas. Right? So I'm going to make the width approximately twice the width. So I'm going to bring in the other image and set it next to it, and there they're basically the same size. So I go width 2.2 inches. I'm going to make the width um, uh, 4.5, right? We'll see how that goes. 4.5 inches. You know, I'm set up for inches here. You know, if you don't have inches there, you get to click on that and say, oh, I, you know, I, I want inches. You might be thinking in centimeters or millimeters. That might be more your style. If you're working in the web, you might be thinking in pixels or percentage. If you're really like a design person, you might be thinking in points and pikas, but I'm going to stick with inches. It's easy for me to figure out. And I'm going to make the height just a little bit bigger than what it is already. So it's 3.3. I'm going to make it, uh, say, I'll just say 3.5. See how that looks. 3.5. Down below, <clears throat> you see anchor, right? And this is a grid that allows you to say, all right, this image that we see now in our workspace, when I expand the canvas, I want it to be on the left side of the canvas or the right side of the canvas, 
if I were going vertically, I'm not, but if I were expanding the canvas vertically and I wanted this image we see now to be at the bottom, I go down here, right, so on and so forth. I know I want this image to be anchored to the left, so as I expand the canvas, it opens up and that image is on the left, and I have space on the right to bring in the second image, right? So I can bring in the second image um, in a couple of different ways. I happen to have the second image on another tab right there, right? So I can select my move tool at the, on the toolbar. That's the very top tool. It's the one with the arrows. And I can click on that. I can also use the keystroke V, right? Gets me to the move tool. Um, I need to come over here and release the lock on this other layer. So unlock it, right? And with my move tool, I can just click, drag, hover over the tab for the second, uh, you know, the image I started out with, drop it in there, place it the way I want to place it, right? So that's if I have the second image open on a second tab, right? Let's say I don't. So I'm going to go Command Z to undo that. So I don't have this other tab there. So you can place images, right? Bring in an image that hasn't been opened yet. You go File, Place. Right? So a little bit beyond halfway down. You see place embedded and place linked. Right? Okay, the difference between that is if you place embedded, you're bringing a file into your document and it becomes part of your document. Right? So it's you know one of the aspects of the document. What happens is the document gets bigger. Right? The file size gets bigger. Right? And sometimes you don't want it to be because that can mean, I mean, if you're working with big files, it can mean you're going from 250 megabytes to 500 megabytes. It can be very big. The convenience of doing that is when you embed a picture into a project, now the project has all of its components. It can move the project around, and you don't have to worry about uh, the component aspects getting detached from the project file. That makes sense. If I do place linked, the image that I bring in doesn't become an actual part of the project file. Um, a, what you're seeing is kind of a, uh, you know, a rendering of it, a preview of it, rather than the whole file. So now you still have two separate documents, right? the linked picture and your project file. So whenever you move those around, the two of those have to move together. Or you know the project file has to move with its components. So that's a little bit inconvenient, but it keeps your project file small you know, so there are pros and cons, but I'm going to go with embedded, place embedded, okay? So you go place embedded. Now you have to search for that file. Where's that file? I happen to already be, I think, yeah, I'm already at the uh, folder that I want for this, and it is this picture. All right, I don't have to do any searching. It's good. It doesn't, uh, I won't take up time searching. So now I place it. Click place. Here's my image. You know, it's plopped down in the middle of the canvas, but it's easy to move because I have a transform box that's around it. So I can move this around. I didn't make it quite wide enough, so my canvas is not quite wide enough. That's okay. I can just expand the canvas again. Okay. So uh, before I do that, I need to press return to complete that transformation move, right? I'm gonna press Command Option C. That would be Control Alt C on a PC. And I get back to my canvas size window and I can make the width, I'm gonna try uh, 4.75. See how that looks. It's anchored in the middle so the images won't shift, it'll just expand the canvas. It's a, it's a little bit more than I wanted. I'm gonna go Command Z. And I'm going to go, uh, I'll try 4.65 to see how that goes. That's better, All right? So 4.65, right? So I have a border now. Well, it's not there, actually. So I have the canvas. It's bigger than the images, right? Whenever you see checkerboard, the checkerboard is canvas. If I export this as a JPEG, right, what will happen is that the checkerboard area becomes white, right? Um, if I want to put a border in the background, which is what I want to do, 
I'm going to do that by going over here to my layer panel on the right. I go down to that circle that's black and white, click on it, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Right. So what you have down here are all of the adjustments that you would see in the adjustments panel up above, but in text form. Right. So at the very top, though, I've got some tools that I don't have up in the adjustments, and that's solid color, gradient, and pattern. I'm going to click on solid color. Right. Turns out I get this kind of gray green, and I can make a selection. I could say, oh, I want black. Right. I want black. And if I really want pure black, it's down in this bottom left hand corner. Right. And something like that. Okay, so I get that black, and now here's my background color. Okay. It's in the layer stack, it's on the very top stack, top of the stack. And I'm going to drag it down underneath the other two layers. All right now, the picture has become visible, and I just have a black background. Okay. The spacing between the two images for me is a little bit too tight. So I'm going to choose the layer for the right image, use my right arrow key, bump it over a couple of clicks. Go to the left, I'll bump it over a click or two, something like that. Now I have space between the images, it's looking pretty good. And now it's pretty apparent that when I've edited these images in the past, um, when I put this black border, I have some, a little bit of extra white around there. I kind of like that actually, but you know, that's subjective. So let's say you don't like that black border after you've got the two images in here and you're like, I don't know, maybe that's a little bit too harsh or, you know, I don't know. So you can change that color if you just double click over in the layer panel, click on that thumbnail, double click, and say I want gray, or I want light gray, or for some reason you want color in there. I personally would not recommend color. I keep it to neutrals, and even if it is color, I might go like, okay, I want it to be a warm gray, right? Maybe a warm-ish, right? You know, okay, you might be a person that really likes intense color. I don't know. You know, and it depends on what the photographs are of, too. Right? If it's something really playful and colorful already, maybe the color adds to it, maybe it just gets too much. But anyway, you want to be thoughtful about what you put in the background. I'm going to be simple, I guess. And I'm going to go down here, and uh, I'm going to make it black again. Okay, black. Okay, so I get that. All right. Okay, so now my project file has three layers in it, right? Two images and the background, right? I started off with a JPEG, right? So now it's got layers in it, and you probably know this, maybe you remember. If I do Command S, if I save it, or Control S, right? If I do that, I go Control S, Command S. So I get this window that opens up, and Photoshop wants me to save it as a Photoshop file, right? Because it recognizes, oh, there are layers in here, and you know it presumes you want those layers, right? JPEGs don't save layers. Photoshop files do. Photoshop is lossless. JPEG is lossy. Lossy. So this is going to become my project file, and I give it a designation of project file. I do underscore proj. So I look at the title. You'll notice I still have a file name number in here. I keep that. I have proj. I know it's the project file, and I give it tags or keywords, and I'll say Brooklyn. I happen to have a Brooklyn tag. I happen to have one that's street, right? And I've got a bunch of tags that you can see there. Right? That helps for searching later on. Right? Okay, so there's my project file. It's a Photoshop file. I say save, cool. Right? I've got that. I can come back to it and change the background if I want to later. But let's say it all looks good and I want to make a JPEG now. In order to make a JPEG, I have to go File, Save As. So File, Save As, or Command, Shift S, Control Shift S on a PC. And then I get here and I say format, not Photoshop, JPEG. Right? Unfortunately, even though my previous file I gave it some keywords, they're not here now, so I still have to go back. Brooklyn Street, right? 
and then I now this JPEG isn't a project file. It's going to be flat. They won't have the layers. So I just go like this, JPEG, right? And say, and let's see, hopefully this works. It goes, so I probably have to give it a name. I'm going to have to call this diptych, I think. Otherwise, I won't be able to save it without replacing something before. So diptych, D-I-P-T-Y-C-H, diptych, all right? And I go, Blink. There you go. Give it maximum quality 12. Don't have to. 9 is fine. You can even go lower if you want. Depends on what you're using this for. And I say, okay, cool. All right, so then back here in Bridge, I've got, oh, I've got my project file. I've got the JPEG that came out of the project. All right, and here are the components for it. Right, the images I used. So the single image, just for kicks, the single image is a very small image. It's been saved. It's only 428 kilobytes. Pretty small. The diptych, on the other hand, is 1.4 megabytes. Right? Both JPEGs. The project file, let's just check that out. Project file is 8.3 megabytes. It's a Photoshop. It's got the layers. It's you know, got all the tricks I just used to make it uh, look like a diptych. So consequently, it's uh, like 16 times bigger file size, right? Okay, so that's making a diptych, all right? Pretty cool. And again, uh, you can make it a triptych. You can make it a grid. You're just adding more pictures and you're expanding the canvas. You can expand it horizontally, expand it vertically, you know, just by changing the values when you get to canvas size. Okay, hope that helps and have fun playing around putting images together. Thanks a lot.